Hey guys, welcome. Today's class is designed for the times when life feels a little extra complicated. <laughs> we know that even in the best of circumstances, life can feel a little bit crazy, busy, so many things to do. And then we just add on some layers when we're dealing with treatment or recovery, we're working through insurance, and there's additional pieces right to just our normal side of life. So the practice today is designed to help us find that simplicity. That might not always mean easy, but finding a place that feels simple and steady within our breath, within our body, to kind of help us get connected, rooted back to the foundation. So you'll want to have something to use for a strap. If you don't have a regular strap, then a belt, a scarf, something like that works great. And if you have a block or two at home, have those handy and nearby. We're gonna go ahead and start lying down on our backs. Have your strap, belt, scarf, whatever you have with you. And then just for a moment, lie straight back, bend your knees, take your feet wide, and let your knees rest together in constructive rest pose. Bring your hands somewhere along your body that you can start to feel your breath. That might be to your belly, your ribs, or one to chest, one to belly. Whatever works best. Close your eyes. And in these first few moments, just allow your back body to settle down to the ground. Feel where the back of your head connects. Let your shoulders drop back. And then allow your hips to settle down to the ground. Sometimes just feeling that support of the ground beneath us is going to help our nervous system to begin to settle. And that can often get flared up when we feel like we're getting pulled in so many different directions. And then just begin to feel your breath beneath your hands. Just let that come slowly, steadily. Our connection to our breath is probably one of the simplest the tools that we have just to come back to center. I think we can do anywhere, anytime. I also find the more that we practice it here on our mat, and hopefully the more we remember to do it, just off our mat when we need it. And take a few more breaths. Start to find a place where your inhale and your exhale breath feel about the same length. Great way to balance the energy, come back to center. And if it feels good today, take a moment, set an intention for your practice. Maybe somewhere where you're looking for a little more simplicity a little more ease. And then into that, just take another full breath. And from there, bring your right knee into your chest. Stretch your left leg out long on your mat. And you're going to take your strap and place it along your heel. So sometimes we do this to the ball of the foot. We're going to do a little different variation today with the strap right to your heel. Just helps to root the thigh bones and give you a little bit more connection and groundedness. And so once you have that, go ahead and shorten your arms up on your strap until your arms are straight, but your shoulders are still down on your back. Right now, I have a fair amount of range of motion here. The leg can be out here. <laughs> You can have a bend in your knee. Wherever it feels like you just start to get a little sensation through the back of the leg. And then flex both feet. Press up through your right heel and out through your left heel. Anchor your left sitting bone down and press your right sitting bone or thigh bone, thigh bone on both of those forward. And see if you can stay heavy through the back of your head and your shoulders. And that it's the weight of your arms just helping to root your leg. 
what we're going for today are poses that are simple but effective. And so that we have sensation or our body's working and engaging. We can also find a little bit more steadiness in our mind within the simplicity of the pose and in our breath. And take just a couple more breaths here. And then release your strap, bend your right knee. And then bring your right knee across to your left for a twist. Bring your right arm out to the side. So your right knee may or may not come to the ground, that's fine. You're welcome to put a block under there if you have it, or if it's comfortable just kind of hanging out above your mat, then that's fine too. Let your right shoulder anchor back. And then roll your outer right hip away from your shoulder, just so it feels like you get a little bit more space into the side of your body. And then take a couple breaths there. Right, we focus a lot on breath to the belly, which is great. We can start to bring breath to other places and expand through the torso even more. And just get a little more settling with each breath. Great. Come on back to center. Bring your right knee back into your chest. And then bend your left leg. Place the sole of your foot to your mat. Okay. And we're going to take half happy baby here. So press the sole of your right foot up towards the ceiling. And you can either take a hold behind your hamstrings or you can take a hold of the outer edge of your foot, wherever it feels like you can reach early in practice here. Okay. And then the other option is keep your left leg bent. That might feel like enough. Or bring your right leg, no, left leg towards straight, or maybe somewhere along that spectrum. Right, where you feel the sensation in the front of your hip, but there's not a strain. And you can still take full breaths around that sensation. And flex both feet. And then drop your right knee, your bent knee, a little bit more down towards the mat. At the same time, press your foot into your hand. So bring in a little bit more resistance, and with that resistance, you might feel some engagement of the muscles. You can just let your back body stay settled and grounded. It's helping to bring energy down. Great, take one more breath. And then release your foot, bring your right knee in. Bring your left knee in. And then just take a little rock side to side in between. All right, let's switch sides. So stretch your left leg, no, right leg, oh, rights and lefts today. And then strap up your heel on your left foot. And just get really specific that your strap, your belt, your scarf is around your heel. And then what that helps is to root the thigh bone straight down which can just help to settle and ground and give you a little firmer connection. Okay, walk your hands up your strap until your arms are straight, but your head and shoulders still rest back. And again, your leg might be a little bit further forward. Your knee might have a bend in it. Find the place that the sensation works best for you. Flex through your feet. And press your right thigh down and press your left thigh forward. You just feel a little bit more engagement there. And we move at this slow but steady and strong pace. It really gives you a chance to anchor your mind to your body and to your breath and to what's happening. Sometimes to slow down. And just let things be a little simpler. And take another couple breaths. And then release your strap. You can set that off to the side now. Bend your left knee and bring your knee into your chest. And give it a squeeze in and then from here, twist left knee over to your right. Maybe your knee comes to the ground, 
Maybe it hovers a little bit in space. We can slide a block underneath if that helps. I'm always a fan of props and support and ways that you can just make the pose a little more comfortable. Right? It doesn't mean it's easy. We're just not straining for it. We can find effort and engagement even with some support. And lengthen out along your left side body. And then just let your left shoulder drop back towards your mat. Next inhale, come on back to center. Hug your left knee in. And then start with your right leg bent, foot to your mat. Half happy baby on this side. So as you put your foot, sole of your foot up towards the ceiling, kind of like you're standing on it, either hold behind your hamstrings or left hand to the outer edge of your left foot. And so your forearm comes across your shin to your foot. Yeah, and this side might feel really different. It does for me today. And so you might keep right leg bent or bring your leg towards straight. And flex through your feet. Press out through your right heel and then press your left foot into your hand and drop your knee down so you get that resistance in both directions and to see if that brings in a little bit more muscle engagement take a couple of breaths there and last time back of head shoulders heavy whole back body connected to your mat and then release your foot bring both knees in take a rock side to side And with your hands behind your thighs, roll forward until your feet come to your mat in front of you. And then use your hands behind you. Come all the way to forward, standing forward fold at the front of your mat. You can have your big toes together or your feet a little bit wider like hip width. So I have to think about hip width as two fists in between your big toes. Sometimes we really overestimate the size of our hips. <laughs> and then take a little bend in your knees. Let your upper body hang. Press down into your feet. Squeeze your inner legs in towards center. Almost like you're squeezing that block in between your legs to get them strong and steady. And then if it feels okay to bring your legs to straight or towards straight, do that. But again, not to the point of strain. You anchor down, feel the ground beneath your feet. And from there, inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Stretch out through the top of your head. Lift your low belly up and in. Keep hugging your inner legs together. And then bring your hands to your hips. From your hips to your feet, press down. And inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. Just soften through your gaze for a moment. Really feel into your feet. So usually we have a, you know, a, a tendency of the way that we stand further forward or back or to one side or the other which we know can then just affect our whole posture. So just see if you can find the place where your feet feel balanced front to back, side to side. And sometimes that means rocking a little bit in all those different directions. So you can kind of see where it balances out back again at center. And then as you press down into your feet, lift your heart up to your hands. So from that steadiness, stability in your legs, you get some lift and length through your spine, through your heart. Take a full breath in. Big breath out. Reach both arms up. Inhale. And then hinge at your hips. Keep your spine long. Fold forward. Exhale. Step your left foot back. Bring your left knee down to your mat. And inhale. Bring your hands up to your front thigh to begin. And then squeeze your front heel towards your back toes. And so it feels like you're hugging in towards the midline of your body. Lift up through your belly. So it's great for support for your pelvis. And then you can stay pretty upright here if that feels like enough sensation in the front of your left hip. Or maybe your hips start to come forward just a little bit. Right, don't lose that strength and support in your legs just to come further forward. Make sure that there's a balance of the two. With your arms, you might stay right here. That feels good. You could bring your hands 
behind you. Take a hold of your forearms or your elbows. Maybe a little bit more space in the front of your chest. Or you can reach your arms up overhead and take a hold of forearms or elbows there. Right, simple but really effective shoulder and chest opening there. And lift your chest up, take your arms back, and stay really strong through your low belly to support that back bend that happens here. And just keep coming back to that full rhythm of breath. And inhale, both arms up. Exhale, hands down to your mat. And then shift your hips back, Ardha Hanuman half splits. Flex your front foot to lift your toes up. And you may even wiggle your right heel forward a little bit more so that your left hip stays stacked over your left knee. This is an awesome place for blocks if you have them. This brings the floor up a little bit closer. You could also come up onto fingertips. You can find the way that works for you. And then with your right foot flexed, press down into your heel. Traction your heel back towards your hip. You get a little more hamstring strength there. You can stay fairly upright. You can start to fold forward a little bit more. Keep hugging your inner legs and then press down into your foundation so that you feel really supported and steady in the pose. Take another full breath. Next, inhale, side forward, bend your front knee. Lift your back leg, step all the way forward to the front of your mat. And exhale, fold. And then go ahead, switch sides. So step your right foot back, right knee down to your mat. And inhale, start with your hands on your left thigh. Just a nice place to work into the steadiness of the legs first. And so squeeze your front heel towards your back knee. Lift up through your belly. And you may even need to take your left hip back a little bit. Sometimes that side pulls way forward. Let's see if you can feel where the hips feel more square towards the front of your mat. And then stay upright here or let your hips just start to settle forward a little bit. And choose which arm variation works best on this side. And that might just depend on if you've had any limiting range of motion, if you're dealing with recovering from surgery or there's scar tissue. So it's nice to find the place where you are finding some sensation, you're not guarding it too much, but that you're not pushing into pain. And where is that balance point between the two? Right. Or if there's range of motion for it, arms up overhead, hands to forearms or elbows. And as you anchor through your feet, lift your chest, take your arms back. And these couple of breaths that are left, just feel into the sensation in your body. In these poses that we do fairly often on our practice, the simple, the foundational, can be a really good gauge of how our bodies feel day to day because they're things that we're revisiting all the time. And both arms up, inhale. Hands to your mat, exhale, slide your hips back, straighten your front leg towards straight. Maybe wiggle your left heel forward a little bit. So right hip, right knee are stacked. Blocks for a little support under your hands if that would feel good. Right, press down into your left foot, traction it back. You can always keep a little bend in your knee there too. And you might walk your hands a little further forward, a little further back. And you can keep tracking your, or tacking your outer left hip back, just like we did in the lunge, just to keep the pelvis and the hips a little more level here. You might find a little more sensation or a little less sensation after having done some bigger hamstring opening right at the beginning. Next, inhale, straighten, nope, bend your front knee, plant your hands. This time, step back, plank pose. Right, so plank pose with knees up or with knees down. Right? And that might just depend on how shoulders are feeling, what kind of weight you want to put there. Right? Knees down can still be super effective. Knees up just going to give you a little bit more weight on there. 
but do spread out wide through your fingers and really anchor through your fingertips. You zip up through your low belly and stretch the top of your head forward. Plank isn't easy, right? We didn't say easy, we said simple, but really effective. Can be a great anchor for the mind when the body's working hard. Full breath in. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Uh, take a nice full breath. Stay rooted through your hands and stretch your hips up and back. And with your next inhale, lift up onto your toes. And as you exhale, bend your knees, look forward, and then walk your feet up to your hands, come to the front of your mat. Press strongly down through your feet so you really feel the connection to the ground. Inhale, lengthen and lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. And take a breath. Root your feet. And even lift your kneecaps up towards your thighs so you get the thighs to engage. And this simple tool of grounding and rooting through our feet can be a really nice way to bring us back to the present moment. When things are all over the place, feel the ground. Root down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. And strong legs, inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. This time step your right foot back. Take your left foot out just an inch or two wider for more stability. And with your inhale, bring both arms up overhead, crescent lunge. Exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. And so just like that lower lunge, squeeze your legs together. It really helps to find our stability towards center. Draw your outer left hip back. And make your right thigh strong. It might have a little bend. Sometimes that feels better for our low back. But keep the legs strong and rooting up, even if there's a bend in it. And then lift through your belly, lift your heart to your hands. Right. You can keep hands here, again, just kind of depending on how shoulders are feeling, what you might be working with in your body, or reach arms up overhead. Wherever you're at, really press down into your feet, lift up through your chest. So you get a little lighter through the upper body, through the anchor of your feet. Take another breath in, and then exhale, hands down. Pivot your feet to the long end of your mat, and then just parallel your feet. So they're even to one another. Point your toes straight forward. Take a breath in. Lengthen out through your spine. And then exhale, fold. Right, and same thing with all of these forward folds. There might be bent knees. It just depends on how that sensation feels through that back line of your body. Just let your head hang. And find that even weight distribution on your feet, just like we did standing before. Especially in forward folds like this, the weight tends to go back. So see if you need to bring a little bit more weight forward to the balls of your feet. And then from your hips to your feet, really root down. Right? Send that engagement down to the ground. You can even take a little movement here with head, neck, shoulders. And see if you can release tension through there. Lift halfway, inhale, and then walk yourself to the back of your mat, pivot your feet. You can take your right foot out a little bit wider so you get that strong, stable stance here. Inhale, come all the way up, crescent lunge. Exhale, hands to heart. Strong legs, squeeze them together. Crease of your right hip back, lift up through your belly. And then really anchor down into your feet. You can keep hands to heart, again, or reach arms up. And then you always have to come straight up. Sometimes if you take your hands more like a V, instead of parallel to one another, it does give the shoulders a little bit more space. And as you press down, lift your chest, open up, and steady your breath. Simple, strong, and effective. 
Next exhale, hands down. Again, pivot your feet to the long end of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway, take a breath in. Exhale, fold. Let's do that one more time. Really root down into your feet, lengthen out through your spine. Your hands are under your shoulders. Exhale, fold. Walk your hands to the front of your mat, and then go ahead, step back, high plank. All right, same option, so knees up or knees down. That'll give you a little bit more support, but still strength through core and shoulders. Lift your low belly up, and squeeze your outer waistline in, just like you're pulling the drawstring in on your pants. Stay long out through your neck, and really press your hands down into your mat. Full breath in, and then exhale, lift your hips up and back down dog. Take one full round of breath here. Next, inhale to your toes. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward, and then walk or step to the front of your mat. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. And then just like we did before, take a moment, really press down into your feet. Feel your steady foundation. And it's just like we're trying to move out all the thoughts, the energy from our head and the things that it's swirling around about just to a place that feels a little bit more rooted and connected. Okay, start with your feet together. Find a focus point for your eyes. And then shift your weight onto your left foot. You're going to bring your right foot in for a tree pose. So that might be right foot to your ankle or shin or upper inner leg. It just depends on balance and range of motion of hip. And if balance is a little wobbly today, right, you're welcome to come to a wall. Just place your fingertips to a wall. If you have a couch right there, sometimes just even like one finger or two can give you the extra support to stay in the pose and be there right, without really having to struggle. And trust me, it's still working. It's just like using a block or a strap, just a little prop to give you the support that you need. Okay, hands to heart. Take a moment to really anchor down now into just your left foot. All right, so as we switch the foundation to one, that might change a little bit. And I find, especially with balance poses, a little bit more weight to the inner edge of your foot can help bring, keep bringing you back to center. And then press your right foot into your left thigh, so hug in. Stay lifted through your belly and up through your chest. And then just like we did before in that low lunge and the anjanea, you can keep hands to prayer. Bring them behind you. That can be a nice one for just a little chest heart opening or bring your arms up overhead. Just a simple repetition in our postures can be really effective as well. Take a couple more breaths. And then release, hands to heart, both feet down to your mat. Feel steadiness on both feet. And then switch. Right, weight to your right foot, left foot in. So if you keep toes down, that also gives you a little bit of a kickstand, which can help with balance. Some days balance is great. Some days is a little more challenging. Bring the sole of your foot anywhere along your inner leg. Just try to avoid the knee itself. So you're above or below your knee. It just doesn't love being pressed in one direction, right? Like already balance on this side, I can tell a little more wobbly today. Start with hands to heart, root down, hug leg and foot together, and then choose your arm variation on this side. And keep a steady gaze point for your eyes. And sometimes when we think of yoga, we think of these big complicated poses and like our foot behind our head and things are twisted around. And well, there are definitely those. I find most often in my practice, it's the simple, strong, and steady postures 
that are really beneficial for keeping me grounded, anchored, and present. One more full breath. And then release your foot. Bring both hands together at your heart. Good. One more balance pose from here. So keep your feet together and keep your gaze forward. And as you shift your weight to your left foot, this time bring your right knee up. Flex your foot. Find a strong lift through your lower belly for support and root down into your left foot. With your next exhale, stretch your right foot back, warrior three. And just like tree pose, there's a lot of gradients along the way. You can be here with your foot, just hovering off your mat, or start to lift it a little bit higher, just depending on where balance is today. Once you're at where you're at, roll your outer right hip down to level out through your pelvis. Keep that lift of your belly. And you can keep hands to heart or reach your arms out long behind you. Press down from your left hip to your left foot. Keep your right foot strong, just like you're standing on it. And next inhale, stand all the way up, both feet down, hands to heart. Just like plank pose, I find warrior three to be one of those that really simple but really effective. Okay, weight to your right foot, left knee up. Take a breath in, anchor down through your right foot, and then exhale, press your foot back. And so the other thing to be aware of here too, if your legs just lifted a little bit, then your upper body only comes forward, right? They're very much in relation to one another like a pendulum. So the further your leg lifts, the more your upper body comes forward. Hands to heart or arms behind. Flex your left foot, just like you're standing on it. Roll your outer left hip down so your pelvis is level. And then press from your right hip to your right foot to root down. Lift your belly, open up through your chest. And next exhale, both feet down, hands to heart. Take a breath. Just notice how your body feels, but also how mind feels, how nervous system feels, just after a little time of these simple steady poses. Both arms up, inhale, fold forward, exhale. Step your left foot back, bring your left knee down again. This time though, take your right foot out a little bit wider. Turn your right toes out to the right, and how much really just depends on how it feels for your hips. You want to keep a little inner leg strength here. And so squeeze your front heel towards your back knee. Then you can let your hips come forward. Right? So just like that lunge before, it's really nice if there's some support for those hip flexors on your left side. And then you have many options here. You can stay right here, hands to your mat. If you have blocks and you want a little bit more support, you can bring your hands to your blocks. If it feels like you have a little more range of motion here, you can come down onto your forearms. Find the place again where there's sensation but you're not forcing. And so you can feel the pose without having to push into it. And with that steadiness in your legs, allow a little softness in your hips. Hip opening postures in general, not always, but in general, can tend to be a little more grounding. Just like that connection of our feet to the ground, a simple tool when our minds are spinning to help to settle our minds, to settle our energy. Take a couple more breaths. And then if you're not already, come back up onto your hands. Set your blocks off to the side. And then lift your back foot, step all the way forward. Great, and then to switch sides, just step your left foot back. Nope, right foot back, right knee down. Take your left foot out a little wider. 
and then turn your left toes out towards the left side of your mat. Right, feel free to play a little bit with how much. Sometimes it's an inch or two, sometimes it's a pretty big turn of the foot. It really just depends on the range of motion of our hips. Okay, and then same thing here, although the amount of support that you need on this side might be really different. And if you want to stay up on hands, if you want a little bit higher, come up onto blocks. We can come down. Sometimes even just one forearm is <laughs> a nice place if both feel like a lot. And keep inner legs strong, squeeze them together. But then allow a little softness in your hips and pelvis for them to settle down towards your mat. Feel into your breath. And sometimes when we're thinking so much about the pose and what our body's doing, we lose that connection. It happens. And the nice thing about the simplicity is sometimes we can stay a little bit more connected to what our breath is doing and how our bodies feel. And that really is our yoga. <laughs> Come on back up. Set your blocks up by the front of your mat. Lift your back knee, step all the way forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Bring your hands to your hips, root down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. Stand strong, press into your feet. Stand tall, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Take a breath. Reach both arms up, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Strong legs, lift and lengthen halfway. And here's another nice place if you have blocks and it feels like the mat's fairly far away. Place blocks underneath your hands so that you're stacking shoulders, elbows, wrists. And standing splits here. So shift your weight into your left foot. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. And then roll your outer right hip down. Take a little bend into your left knee. And then with that space, you might be able to lift your right leg just a little bit higher. Bring your left leg back towards straight. And then pull from your right heel towards your right hip. So it feels like you're really engaging your thigh into your hip socket. Just like we did when we were laying down with the heel or the strap to your heel. So we'll take one more full breath in. And then exhale, release that foot back down. And take a breath between sides. And then shift your weight to your right foot. Lift your left leg up. And flex your foot. Outer left hip down. So often what happens is we can lift higher if you roll the hip open. And often I like to favor the stability or that levelness of the hips. So you can really get the strength through the leg. And so you Draw your left heel back in towards your hip. Then take that little bend into your right knee. And with that space, sometimes you can lift your left leg just a little bit higher. And it feels like it just moves like a millimeter. And bring your right leg back towards straight. Take one more full breath in. And then exhale both feet down. And set your blocks off to the side. Plant your hands and step back to plank. Again, knees up or knees down. And from plank, lower all the way down to your belly. Okay, from here, roll up onto your left side. You're gonna prop yourself up into your hand. It's one of those that really does look very simple. We're just kind of hanging out here. But it's really good for stabilizing our deep inner core muscles. The key here is to line up your elbow, your shoulder, your hips, and your feet. We tend to compensate, like the feet will come further forward or back because it helps with the balance. <laughs> so a really good gauge of if your body's lined up is if you lift up your right hand, <laughs> things start to wobble a little bit, you're lined up right. And that's what we're going for is to ask those deeper stabilizing muscles to turn on. Right, so that it's really effective 
inside, even though it looks fairly simple outside. You can keep your hand down if that's helpful for support, or if you're ready to challenge that a little, drape it along your right leg. It really helps you here too to flex your feet and press down through the outer edge of your bottom foot. So that becomes a really good anchor point for your pose. Okay. And if it's feeling like not great in your shoulder to hold your head up, you can always let your head rest all the way down. You can make some little adjustments there for how that range of motion or mobility is through shoulder. Okay, and then just an option here. You can stay right here. You can bring the sole of your foot in like we just did in tree pose, and that might be shin. That might be inner leg. Usually what happens there is then the hips want to come back. And so encourage your pelvis forward. Press your foot into your leg and squeeze from your outer right knee towards your outer right hip. Okay. Hand down to your mat to help with stability. And just let it float up, bring it along your leg. Keep pressing through the outer edge of your bottom foot. And then wherever you're at, just take another full breath. Release your foot, roll to your belly, and then just come up onto the second side. So roll up onto your right side, and take a moment again to line up. Whether you've got head down, head in your hand, so that shoulder, hips, feet are all in that one straight line. Flex feet and press down. You can do that same thing to test it once you bring your hand up. And things start to wobble a little bit, it means it's working. <laughs> if it helps to keep your hand down, then do that. But strengthen through your legs and let your side body settle. And find the place where it's asking for a little bit. Right? You're asking the structure to turn on, the muscles to work, but you're not gripping and straining. Okay, and then just like that first side, you can stay right here, right? With Hand lifted or hand by your side. It's a good one. Or bend your top leg. Bring it in for a tree pose variation lying down. And then again, just watch the hips here. Press the pelvis forward. Squeeze from outer left knee towards outer left hip. It's just it helps to strengthen and engage. Press foot and leg together. Maybe challenge. Your balance, Ooh, there it is, <laughs> by lifting your hand up. And whichever variation you're in, take another breath, keep rooting down for your back foot. And then come all the way down, unwind, come to your belly. And from here, stretch your arms long by your sides, and then press the tops of your feet down. So get really anchored and rooted through the tops of your feet. Right, so much so that when you press down, you might even feel your kneecaps lift up, thighs really start to engage. And with that, inhale, lift up through your upper body, locust pose. Right, so that the lift in the upper body comes from that stability and strength from the legs. And reach your fingers back, hug your shoulder blades together. And take one more breath in. And then exhale, lower all the way down, turn your head to one side. Let your legs relax for a breath. And then come back to center, forehead or chin to your chest. This time you can interlace your hands behind you. And if that's feeling like, nah, that's not great on my shoulders today, then keep the first variation. Wherever you're at strong legs, really press down. Feel like you're clicking all 10 toenails down to your mat. Feel the legs get strong. And then zip up through your low belly. Your inhale, lift up your head, chest, shoulders. And stretch your knuckles back towards your heels. See if you can still keep a steady, simple, effective breath here. And lower all the way down. Bring your hands by your ribs. 
Stretch back, child's pose. Big toes together, knees out wide. Settle your hips back to your heels. And you can keep your arms stretching straight out in front and let them rest back by your feet. Let your forehead rest to your mat or to a blanket or to a block. And let your knees be wide enough so it feels like there's room, there's space for your belly. And we'll feel your breath fill all the way to your belly. This is another one of my really go-to poses, especially at the beginning of practice. When I'm feeling like things are really scattered. Get low to the ground and fold in. Can often be it's really settling. And from here, walk yourself all the way back up. And shift your hips to the side and bring your legs out in front. Good. So if you have a blanket or even a couch cushion like a throw pillow, I think I forgot to tell you guys that at the beginning of class. This can just be nice for seated poses, especially if you tend to have a little less flexibility through hips. And go ahead to stretch your legs out. And so if you are sitting up on something, it's nice to come to the edge. So it feels like the pelvis can rock forward a little bit instead of feeling like we're rounded in through the back. And so it just keeps pelvis forward and gives you some space for your upper body. Flex your feet. Press your heels down. Inhale, reach both arms up. And then hinge at your hips, start to fold forward. Good. Wherever that stopping point is, bring your hands down. Okay. And one other variation here that can be great, it's feeling like forward folds don't always work for me. You can bend knees. You can take a hold behind your knees. You could slide a block or a pillow under your knees for a little bit more support. It's funny sometimes how forward folds sitting down can sometimes be more challenging than when we're standing. <laughs> And so wherever that right amount of bend is for you, just keep your legs strong. Same idea, just like you're standing on them. Roll your inner thighs down towards your mat, back, and help to root your thigh bones. And stay long out through the top of your head as you fold. And take a few breaths. Just notice again how things feel now. And sometimes when we're in the practice, we're not always noticing the effect that it's having on us in the moment. You know, we, we really feel it later. I think such a great part of our practice is to notice how different kinds of practices affect us. Right? Do we need things that are more stimulating, invigorating? Do we need things that are rooting and grounding? So we need a little heat building. And especially when you practice like this at home and you have a whole menu of choices, then you can really choose the kind of practice you need that day. You know how it affects you or how hopefully it will affect you that day. And so you can pick what you need. And bring yourself all the way back up. And, and then one more. Soles of your feet together, knees out wide. Again, just stay sitting on the edge of that support. And then really press your feet together, particularly the pinky edges of your feet. When you press there, it can help with your knees. So for some of us in this pose, for many of us in this pose, the knees are more up here. Right? So blocks there are a great support to have to just give yourself a little bit more height there. Right? And if you're here and the knees are pretty high, I usually recommend just staying upright so you're not pinching on the front of the hips. If your knees are a little lower and it feels like you have space for it, then you can start to take the forward fold just like we did with straight legs. But you wanna feel the place where your seat's still anchored back and you can stay long out through your spine. So it feels more like long spine as you fold forward instead of just rounding in. You can play with those two too and see how that feels different, how it affects your body differently. And then once you're settled in, just take a couple more breaths. And 
And walk yourself all the way back up to center. Use your hands to help your knees back together. Slide off of your blanket, a pillow, if you have that, and come all the way down onto your back. And bring your knees into your chest. Take a rock side to side. With your next inhale, take a big squeeze in, thighs towards belly, forehead towards knees. And as you exhale, stretch out. Settle yourself, settle yourself into Shavasana. And if you want some support under your knees here, sometimes that feels good. A pillow, a blanket, anything under your head. Even a blanket laid across you for a little bit more warmth. Bring your hands where they're comfortable. They can be by your sides. Some days I find that hands to the belly can just be soothing. So find what's best for you. As you close your eyes, allow your body to settle in, just like we did at the beginning. So body part by part, just let things settle and drop back. Let go of any effort with your breath. And just allow yourself to settle in for these last few moments of rest. In this final pose here, this is really where the practice integrates. You know, it's like we develop the muscle memory for all that we did over the past hour. And why I think this is so important is that when your body starts to know where this point for your nervous system is, to have this, this to come back to this baseline. And so as you rest here, just notice how it feels. Whether there's just a little or a big shift from the beginning, and the more we do it, the more we develop that muscle memory for it. Have a little bit more time to stay and you want to rest, please just stay. If you're ready to come out, take a full stretch. Reach your arms, stretch out through your legs. And then one at a time, draw your knees to your chest, roll to your side. And then press yourself all the way back up to sitting. Bring your hands together at your heart. Anchor your seat and sit tall and bow head to heart. I hope the practice helped you to find a little bit of simplicity when things are swirling around about you. Thank you so much for sharing practice. Namaste.